Hey everybody, it's Eric from epautos.com, your libertarian car guy. And I'm going to do a quick walk around here of this Mercedes Sprinter van, um, which I've juxtaposed here uh, next to this, uh, this full-sized Kia minivan, just to give you some sense of its real-world size. The Sprinter is big, but it's not ridiculous. It's not um, unmanageable. If you can drive a full-size minivan like this Kia, um, you probably could drive the Sprinter comfortably. Um, in fact, it's more comfortable to drive than a full-sized uh, SUV, something like a Chevy Tahoe, much less a, a Chevy Suburban. And one of the reasons for that, let me pan over to the side, is the kind of almost cab forward design of the thing. Um, if you look at the front clip, you'll see that there's not that much sprinter beyond the axle center line. There's really only about, I don't know, a foot and a half or so. Um, and where you sit in the driver's seat, you're really only just behind the front axle. And what's interesting about that, if you compare it to a conventional SUV, or if you compare it to um, one of the, one of the uh, Sprinter's big competitors, which is the Nissan NV, um, in, a, in an SUV or a truck conventionally laid out, the nose will come way the heck out here, you know, because you usually have a big V8 under the hood, and um, that makes it a lot more unwieldy to drive, um, even though overall it's big. Well, it's actually more tall than it is big. If you uh, look at the roof line, let me walk back over here so you can look at it compared to the, uh, the Kia minivan here. They're really close as far as overall length. Um, the big difference is that the Sprinter is that much higher. And the upside of it is that you can almost stand up, even if you're a big tall geek like me, inside the Sprinter van. And that's one of the reasons why the Sprinter van is so popular as a platform for RV conversions, um, as well as for commercial duty. And in this case, let me walk around and show you. In this particular case, the one that they sent me here was set up for uh, Jitney bus duty. So as you can see, we've got three rows of seats here and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, you can put 12 people in this sucker if you wanted to. Um, Last year, they sent me one uh, that was set up essentially as the, uh, the shell, the platform for whatever you wanted to do with it. And it didn't have anything in the back at all except for a floor. Um, but it did have kind of a cool drop-down running board, which this one ironically doesn't have, which I think it should. After all, it's a Jitney bus. And one of the issues with this thing is that the step-in height is pretty high. I mean, look, I'm 6'3", and you can see how much I have to stand up to put myself in here. So that's kind of an issue. They do at least give you a grab handle for the passengers. Uh, unfortunately, you don't get one for the front seat passenger, and that's kind of odd. Um, I've given several people a ride in this thing, and they're looking, wondering, you know, hey, where's what, what am I going to grab onto to haul myself up here? You can see where the seat is. So the seat here comes up to here on me. And again, I'm six feet three, so it's a little bit difficult to get into and out of it. Um, that's one of the few issues that I have with this thing, or complaints that I have. The other is the cup holder, which I'll show you in a momento. Some of the cool things about this, uh, it is rear-wheel drive based, and it does come standard with a diesel engine. Um, the other vehicles in this class are uh, either front-wheel drive, uh, like the Dodge Ram Promaster, and can't tow a whole lot and really aren't that heavy duty, uh, or they don't offer a diesel, uh, much less come standard with one. Um, the Nissan NV uh, comes standard with a gas engine, with a big V8 gas engine optional. Uh, it'll pull a lot, it'll tow a lot, but that gas V8, it's the same big V8 that you find in the Nissan Titan. And in the Titan, I can tell you that thing gets about 13 miles per gallon on average. Um, and in something that weighs probably 2,000 pounds more, you're probably going to be looking at 8, 9 miles per gallon on the low side, and maybe if you're lucky, a little more than that. This thing actually comes standard with a four-cylinder turbo diesel, and it's more or less the same engine that they use in other Mercedes vehicles, passenger car vehicles, including the current E-Class. Uh, and while EPA doesn't publish mileage stats um, for vehicles in this class because they're considered heavy trucks or commercial, or I forgot what the actual category is, but they don't publish official uh, stats, um, I find that uh, it'll average around 25 or 26, which is really doggone good. Um, and the other thing is not so much about the mileage, um, the diesel produces a lot of torque and um, way down low, and that's what you want uh, in a big, heavy vehicle like this to get it moving. Um, 
It moves out smartly with the, uh, the, the, the four-cylinder turbo diesel. Uh, and this one that they sent me this time has the optional V6 turbo diesel, which has even more torque. Um, and it's got really good performance. In fact, they had to put a speed limiter on the thing. Um, so it's about 85 miles an hour on top. And that's mainly because of the high profile. Uh, and the thing would probably start to become unstable if you rocked it up to 100 or something. But because it's got ample power, um, you can keep it hammered at 85 all day long, um, and it, it's not struggling or trying real hard. Uh, plus, if you're a commercial user, a jitney bus user, RV person, you put 100,000 miles in a year, uh, the diesel really is the way to go, I think. Because, um, you know, diesel's going to last you probably a lot longer than a gas engine. Let's take a look at the back here. You'll note the Mercedes three-pointed star, and that's... <laughs> why this thing costs more than its rivals, which uh, is probably the one negative of this thing relative to the others in the class, is that it is expensive. But you get, you know, you get what you pay for. It's a Mercedes. The other one's a Nissan. Nothing wrong with that. The other one's a Dodge, and there's nothing wrong with that either. But they're not high-end brands, and those vans are really uh, more, if you think about a spectrum, with the far left being a pure commercial vehicle and the far right being a, uh, a high-end RV, uh, those uh, those rivals are far more over to the left, whereas this Mercedes is far more over to the right. You get a nicer vehicle, that's what you're paying for. And as a platform for uh, a commercial, um, as a platform for an RV, it really is the, the one to go to. And the other ones will do the job, but this one will do it much, much, much more uh, uh, in a much more high-end kind of way. Just even looking at the dashboard, I wish I had the other trucks here to show you, but I've driven all of them. And, you know, look, this one has... A Mercedes-style gauge cluster, uh, something that would be comparable, comparable to what you'd find in an E-Class. It's got uh, GPS, it's got all the, the climate control and everything else that you would find in uh, you know, a Mercedes vehicle. So it's a nice vehicle. Now, I'll point out the one thing that's really crappy about the Sprinter van, and it should be easily fixed, and that's this preposterous, ludicrous little cup holder thing that they've got here. And this is a typical German thing. It's flimsy, and it's small. And if you put a big coffee cup in here, go around a corner too fast, um, it's going to go spilling everywhere, trust me. Uh, that's probably one of the few things about it that stinks. They do give you these extra cubbies up here, though, and there's another one up here, and that's nice. you got an additional USB port up here, which is nice. Uh, and, of course, you've got extra room up here and here. And look at all that capacity back there. You really could have uh, a field day with this thing. You could live in this thing. Remember Chris Farley in the van down by the river? Well, this is a pretty doggone nice van to live down by the river in. Anyhow, uh, let me give you the back view again. There it is. Uh, it's pretty neat. I like it. Uh, the base price of it, by the way, is about $35,000, and it's available in two wheelbases. Uh, there's a quote-unquote short, it's still long for something like this, and then an even longer wheelbase, um, and a variety of different configurations. You, know, you can add stuff uh, directly from the manufacturer that is from Mercedes, or you can take this thing uh, to an RV conversion shop and just you know, ha let them have their way with it, <coughs> and the only limits being your imagination and your pocketbook. Um, so I think that's about it. Uh, the full review is up at epautos.com, uh, your libertarian gearhead site. And um, thanks for viewing, and we hope you'll come by and leave your comments. And we'll catch you on the flip-flop when we review this Kia minivan.